to an end and uh, came to New York and uh, joined uh, what's called the underground. Uh, it was reported that when he was a teenager, he dyed his hair silver in imitation of his hero, Andy Warhol. Um, in recent interviews, he's been amazingly frank about uh, all kinds of things, and he's certainly not shy. And he's sitting right here, Lance Loud. Hello, Lance. Hi. Hi. Uh, You, you've emerged as uh, a kind of a star of the series in a way, and um, yeah. what, what kind of reactions sort of are you like, getting? Sort of like um, the Linda, whatever her name is, of Deep Throat, sort of. <laughs> Linda oh. Lovelace. And the, but um, you, you're just only, you're more of a, of a um, uh, G-rated audience. Are you sore about the... <laughs> no, I love it. I, love it. I get a suntan thinking from it. I, I don't know if you're putting me on or not. No, I honestly mean that. You're glad you did it, and you, you, I'm just sure I'm glad I did it. Yeah. I don't watch this series really. I like to see about the last ten minutes of every show, because um, even though maybe it doesn't portray us as uh, the way we had wished and dreamed it would, the they really do sort of all of a sudden, no matter how draggy the entire hour seems, they suddenly pull themselves together and really throw on that old drama at the end and freeze out and play some good music or something. I really like that. <laughs> Okay. What kind of response are you getting from people around you and uh, the general public? And well, uh, I've gotten a lot of true hearts sent to me in the mail, and um, a lot of uh, blank phone calls where people call up and oh, uh, murmur things into the phone, then hang up. But I love that. I love hearing people. <laughs> I can talk to people better that I don't really know than people that I know. Like yeah. me. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. What's, what's, which, cate which category am I again? Uh, people you don't you're know a good people... sport, but I, you know, we haven't had dinner together or anything. So you have your doubts about me? As a, as no, no, no. I don't or... doubt. That's the thing. When I don't meet anybody, I certainly don't doubt them. I mean, I, I'll accept them anyway, even if they want me to sell Brillo. I'd like to do an advertisement for Levi Jeans, but... Uh, so so you, you're hoping this will be a stepping stone to all kinds of uh, opportunities? In the... uh, yeah, but I feel like if I step on it too hard, I'm going to sink right through it. But... Can, I, can, you, can you be completely serious in this answer? Uh, do you think your parents' feelings about you have changed um, because of the show? Or no, you they've uh, basically been um, amplified. You know, some of the charm of growing up is that you do have a certain play between your parents. A little bit of mystery here, out the window, and they um, call up a psychiatrist saying, "Listen, you've got to make Lance confide in you and stuff." You know, all that mystery of whether there, wh whether the truth is going on within family mm -hmm. is all um, sort of nice. But now that the film has really been brought out and they've been made to talk about it my parents feelings really they grab to the nearest ideal and the the n nearest uh, moral that they can and mm. sometimes they use them against me but we are yeah. all growing up you get along with them any better in any way than you did before you did it oh no but i love my father oh uh, my mother's a great person i really like her a lot but uh we had actually never got along better before or since this film because there was so, so much um, uh, left to be said in it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that no one understood it and we weren't pretending. It was just that, Jesus, I didn't want to get into a fight with her after I hadn't seen her in six months and I was hoping that she was going to be able to elevate me from the scene that I was going to, I was going to introduce her into. Not, what do you mean by that? When she, in the episode where she came to visit you for the first time and see the scene you were living in in New York, you would say you were hoping that she would... Well, I mean, I, I had actually wanted her to uh, take me and uh, put me in a little apartment of my own. I'd become a busboy with um, Flash and, you know, something like that. Really retire into the uh, masses. I would have liked to do that. You, you're serious now? changed. Are you serious? Or, uh, I'm really that? serious. Okay. Because I know you have a sense of humor, and I'm just never uh, sure no, when it's I'm, there. Sometimes I gag on it, but I still really okay. am basically honest. So, well, are you saying there then <clears throat> that um, <laughs> I want to? <laughs> 
I, I'm trying to be serious. Oh, I get it. Are, are, you, are you saying there, though, that you hope for something from your mother, maybe, that you would no, have gotten if the thing hadn't been being filmed at the time and been on television, but that because it was on television, you behaved in a certain way and maybe she behaved in a certain way, that didn't allow your life to go on the way it might have if... Uh, Mm, if, uh, no, I don't think I, I don't think that basically. Oh. I think that maybe she would have um, been left in, in the dark about a lot more things. Well, but, that be, would that be good or bad? In a way, it would be good, but yeah. uh, I mean, I don't want her to grow up with with too many illusions. I mean, they they cast a lot of a totally different set of illusions during the film, but. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's been made clear to her now, even though she still denies it, is that I am 21, and I'm not only Lance Loud, son of um, Blondie Day, um, Pat and Bill Loud, but uh, I'm more or less 21 years old and a person. Yeah. And, I, I, and now I'm sort of, um, I'm allowed to feel and react the way I want to react and not the way I'm supposed to react in front of customers, things. Uh-huh. I said earlier that they never used the word homosexual in the uh, no. publicity of the show. I don't think it even came up during it. And yet you've given a couple of interviews in which you were quite frank about it. Uh, well, is I that hard to do in, in uh, the year 1970? No, I was actually surprised that they brought out the, the idea that sexuality, that homosexuality is something more than just l liking to give kisses to boys on the sly, you know. Um, I'd wanted, I'd wanted it, I knew what I was going to come off as anyway. Mm -hmm. um, as Jerry Ragney put it when I moved into the Chelsea, I was a fat-ass opportunist. Unfortunately, I didn't come off as much of an opportunist as I would have liked. But um, Can you explain that a little more? Well, I feel that the way they edited it, they made me seem obnoxious, and I really do get harder and harder to swallow during the entire series. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, not that I'm so outrageous, just that I'm so dedicatedly stupid, you know? Like, really, I really think I'm Mr. Cool. On the screen? Yeah. Yeah. 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, they cut a little bit of the, f or a lot of the friction and the dynamic, Mr. Sism, um, and all that, you know, energy. Yeah. that uh, really would reveal that I was not only a fat-ass opportunist, but I, th this was merely a stage, and I was going through it, and I would go on. Might you have told your mother certain things that you wouldn't have told her if there weren't cameras there in the Chelsea? No, we told them all in the taxi cabs. Between takes, is that what you're saying? That you lived some of your life in between segments so that things you really wanted to say. Well, yeah, well, you see, the idea, uh, the thing behind that is that uh, basically... When the cameras hit us, we were sort of uh, ready for response, but response in a way that, well, they're in our lives, but what we want are the best view angles of our backs, you know, our, our, the backs of ourselves, of our persons. Instead of turning around and smiling at the camera, we usually just sort of uh, gave a gratifying wink once in a while to let them know that we knew they were there. When you say we, you mean you or you mean all of you? We, all. Everyone. You were you were aware that you were on though some weren't you? I mean you kind of played to the camera a couple of times. You I think you admitted in an interview that you, when you felt things were dragging, you uh, would give what you thought was a soulful look, and you came off just looking stupid or something. You said in an interview. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I really wanted to come off a lot more, uh, a lot more brutal. Simply as I said before, just simply to show that I was going on, and someday I was going to be bruised or battered enough to be able to understand some other way of life. How about the things that have been written about you now? Do you feel that you've been badly treated by the press? Mm. Well, I don't know. Maybe some people enjoy swimming next to an electric eel, but... Um, <laughs> oh, I don't uh, understand that. What's that mean? Oh, that refers to the New York Times Sunday article that was written about me. Oh, That's yes. the only one that really hurt me, but yeah. I took two aspirin and it was gone. <laughs> is, your life, uh, is your life better now that you've moved to New York? Do you... Jesus, no. No. All my clothes are creeping up on me and attacking me and rotting and my bed is falling apart. I could complain all night. It could be 90 minutes about Lance's apartment if we want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back after this message.